Hey everybody, my name is Steven and welcome back to the Storytime channel. Without wasting any time, let's get into our stories of the day. Entitled mother tried to get her daughter my job because I'm chubby. This happened today so I thought I'd share. I'm female and home from college. The stay at home order in my town is slowly being lifted so some businesses are finally opening up. My parents require me to have a summer job. I'm blessed enough that I get to keep all the money I earn, my parents just like me to work to gain experience. This will be relevant later, but I'm not a skinny girl. I wouldn't consider myself large either. I'm 5 foot 6 and weigh about 140 to 145 pounds right now and carry most of it in my hips and thighs. The freshman 15 did hit me hard though as I used to be 120ish. So today, after finishing my last online final, my dad called me. He told me that one of his friends who runs a heating and AC company texted him that they were looking for girls to work in the office answering phones and stuff. I got excited because that's exactly what I wanted. So I put on a dress, printed a copy of my resume, and drove down. The ladies inside were super nice and asked me to fill out an application, so I sat down to do so, and this is where the entitled mother enters. Here's everyone involved. EM, Entitled Mom, EG, Entitled Girl, Female, Probably 16-ish, P, Me, DL1, Desk Lady 1, Front Desk, This Woman is Relatively Thin, Which Will Be Relevant Later, DL2, Desk Lady 2, Desk Further Back But Still In The Room, This Woman Is Plus Sized, Which Will Be Relevant Later, B, Boss Of The Business, We're In The South, Which Might Be Relevant, Because Typically For Jobs Like This, They're Looking For A pretty face to sit behind the counter and talk to customers. This is unspoken though. Yes, it's awful, but hey, I needed a job. So as I'm filling out an application, Entitled Mother enters with Entitled Girl. She announces that she's here about the opening and her daughter would like to apply. Desk Lady 1 explains that she'll need to fill out an application and hands her one and a pen. They come sit in the lobby right beside me, which I thought was weird, but I didn't say anything. Entitled mother to me. Are you here for the job as well? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. You know, that little cocky sound people make. I ignored her and went up to ask Desk Lady 1 a question about the application. It was about how professional one of my references for babysitting was. When I returned and sat back down, Entitled Mother walked up to the desk. Does my daughter even really need to fill this out? Desk Lady 1 says it's protocol. Boss will look at all the applications and decide who to call for an interview. Is he here? I'm sure if he could see my daughter, he'd know who he wanted to call. <laughs> Desk Lady 1 says he is, but he isn't seeing visitors right now. How will he know who to hire if he doesn't know what the girls look like? Desk Lady 1 says, well, he will need to see their references and make a few calls before he... No, my daughter is an aspiring model. She won Insert Local Pageant in 2019. He needs to see her to know she's the face he wants to see behind the counter interacting with customers. Desk Lady 1 says, I'm not sure what you mean. This isn't a modeling job. Looks don't really matter. Oh, I know, but they do. And let's face it, boss isn't going to want... At this point, she leans in closer to Desk Lady 1. A chubby girl up here, is he? The whole time, Entitled Girl is smirking at me and glances as she fills out her application. This got the attention of Desk Lady 2 as well as me, and we both looked up at this point. Desk Lady 2 says, ma'am, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, no disrespect, I just know Boss personally and know he'd prefer a new pretty face around the office. Maybe I'm a little biased, but I think there's no question between my daughter and, well, this young lady for example. Me. No offense honey, just trying to save you some time. At this point, I'm in tears. I don't know if it was rage or the sting of her insult, but either way, I was not going to let her see me cry. So I quickly got up and handed my application to Desk Lady 1 before trying to leave. Desk Lady 2, a plus-sized woman, sweetie wait, talking to me. You say you know boss personally, right? To Entitled Mother. Oh yes, we went to high school together. Desk Lady 2 then says, and you know him so well that you know he'd prefer a skinny woman behind this desk? Well, I didn't say that. She did. But I'd assume so. Desk Lady 2 says, great. Well, I'm his wife and I've worked behind this desk for almost 15 years now. And as you can see, I could probably drop a few. And I take personal offense to what you're saying about my husband and this young lady. So I'd like you to wait in the car while your daughter fills out her application. Entitled mother and entitled girl both stormed out at that point. Entitled girl took her application, so I don't know if she'll apply or not. 
But both women behind the counter told me that Entitled Mother was a witch and they'd vouch for me with the boss. So I'm hopeful that I got the job. How disrespectful can you be? If you were in the room and you overheard this discussion happening, would you do anything or what would you think? Let me know in the comments below. Karen asks for private info, gets charged and arrested. Hello, this just happened and I am still surprised that these people exist. Anyway, on mobile, so ignore any typos. Backstory. I am a 13 year old boy and I look like I am 11 or so. I have a friend whose house I was walking to. Okay, so the cast. P.O. is police officer. K is Karen. C.O. is my friend. O.P. is me. So the story. I was walking to my friend's house when this white Mercedes drives by me. Keep in mind that this is in the country so seeing Ferraris or Porsches are a rare occasion. I keep walking when the car stops a bit in front of me and Karen gets out. What are you doing here? Walking to my friend's house. And where is that, hmm? I don't have to tell you. This was wrong. Why do you have that backpack then? Because it's like an hour and a half away. You're probably going to steal something or mug someone. No, I'm not. Now go away. Again, wrong. You're going to regret this. I will call the police on you. Okay, go ahead. The police ain't gonna do shoot. How dare you swear to me, you little idiot. I just give her a disappointed look. Karen gets back into her Mercedes and drives away. Well, that's that. Or so I thought. I start walking again and see the car again, this time with a cop car next to it. At this point, the, ah shoot, here we go again, meme is playing in my head as I walk towards the car like it's the final boss. Police officer says, hey you, please come over here. Okay, yes sir. That's him, he attacked me, arrest him officer. Did you attack this lady? No, sir, she demanded that. Liar, I know you robbed someone. Police officer, noticing my backpack, says, Can I see your bag? Yeah, sure. I hand my pack over to the police officer. Do you have any weapons on you? Yes, but only for... See, I knew you had guns on you. I only have a knife for self-defense in case someone did try to mug me. Please put the knife on the ground. I put a tiny little red Swiss army knife on the ground. Oh, I thought you had a big jackknife or the like. You can keep it on you. Here's your bag back, by the way. Turns to Karen. Why did you lie about a robbery, Miss Karen? Well, he is going to. I was not. My friend can vouch for me. I then put my friend on speaker as I was in a call with him the entire time. My friend says, if OP robbed someone, I would know. I say, see? He's lying. Sorry for holding you up. You can go now. Don't let him get away. Karen then scratches me so hard it drew blood. That's it, Karen. Put your hands behind your back. Why? For assaulting a minor, disturbing the peace, trespassing and assaulting a police officer. Oh, Karen also scratched the police officer. Have fun in prison. P.S. It turns out Karen had two warrants out for illegal drug trafficking and domestic abuse. At first I was like, Karen's not going to probably go to prison over that unfortunately. And then I heard the warrants. And then I realized she is going to prison. Entitled mother tries to steal from an ambulance, then prevents it from leaving. This is not my story, but my wife's. She's an EMT and doesn't have Reddit. She shares stories on a group app with friends. Some are so good though. This one really got me itchy all over. She said I could share them if I don't reveal locations and names and not mention specific conditions of patients unless relevant, etc. Cast, EM is entitled mother, kid is EM's kid, old sick lady, old man, old sick lady's husband, nice neighbor, PTO1, public transportation officer 1, PTO2, public transportation officer 2, wife, partner, wife's co-worker, call is received, we head out, a worrying call, not corona related, the old sick lady has other health issues, she is however very fragile, they called in a little late hoping it would pass on its own, to limit exposure if possible. It didn't pass, it got quite bad to the point that going to the hospital by themselves was no longer an option. We arrive at the house in question, no other options than to double park. Nice neighbor waved us down. Note, as far as I know he does shopping and gardening etc for old sick lady and old man, unsure, nice guy anyway. Wife went inside and partner gathered equipment needed. Old sick lady is a frequent caller, we knew what was needed. We are now both inside lady's house partner mentioned that there was a car waiting in front of the ambulance. 
and a lady inside was gesturing angrily. Barely two minutes pass, a horn starts blaring outside constantly. Nice neighbor can be heard yelling at someone through the noise, then silence. A car door slams, an unknown high-pitched voice, entitled Mother, can be heard but too far away to really understand. It's quiet for a bit, then the following can be heard at the doorstep. Door is cracked open. Get out of the way! Nice neighbor says, no ma'am, what are you doing? You need to move your car, you're blocking the ambulance. Well, it should have just been parked in a spot then. There is one right here. Now move and let me in. I have a child in the car. I've been waiting for 10 minutes. Nothing was free when we arrived, and we don't care. We park conveniently for us, not you. Meanwhile, we are still caring for old sick lady. Now his neighbor says, ma'am, you're not getting in. Do not touch me. Entitled mother, now yelling, let me in. I need to talk to the ambulance people. More yelling of the same sort continues. Partner says she is not giving up, calling in a disturbance. Old man says, what is her problem? Why does she want in my house? I don't know this woman. Why does she want inside my house? Do I call the police? My wife is sick. Why is she yelling? Old man was getting very anxious about the whole situation. Since partner didn't need my help for the current part and keeping the calm was more important, I went to the door. What is the problem? The nice neighbor says, well, the cuts off. Excuse me, you're blocking the entire road. You should move your car. We're on call. Please back up and drive around the other side of the square. Tries to head back inside. Um, I'm not the one blocking the road. I have my six-year-old with me. He is frightened and just wants to go home. Kid, who looks to be over 10 years old at least, trying to sink through the ground standing next to the car. Then turn your car around and go home. We're not moving our ambulance for you. This person needs help and you need to leave before we call the police. Well, okay, don't have to be freaking rude about it. We're all in this crisis together, you know. Entitled mother in a calmer tone. Oh, by the way, are those masks for Corona? Those look like they work well. Partner from inside, wife? Wife runs inside. Entitled mother calling after her. I'm not that good at backing up, could you help me? Hello? Nice neighbor later stated he helped her back out before heading back inside to check on his kids. Old sick lady wasn't doing too well. The call was made to take her in as soon as we could safely move her. Wife runs out and gets the stretcher. Entitled mother was backed into an empty spot at this point. Meanwhile, a bus had been standing there parked off to the side for a few minutes. It couldn't detour like the cars did. The driver was just patiently messing about on his phone. Wife heads back inside, working on old sick lady. A few minutes later, we just got her on the stretcher as we hear the following. Public Transportation Officer 1 says, And Donald Mother, what are you doing? Get out of that ambulance! I'm just grabbing something for my son. They said it was okay. Get out now! Kid crying says, Mom, I don't even want a mask. Let's go home, please. We walk outside, and sure enough, Entitled Mother was standing in the ambulance, making a mess of everything. Touching equipment, etc. without gloves, obviously searching for things. Info. The PTO, public transportation officers, were nearby and had come to check out the situation of the blocked bus route. PTO 2 to partner. Sir, did you give permission to this woman to enter and take stuff from the ambulance? Partner says, heck no. She's been making a whole scene and has now contaminated our ambulance. Partner, meanwhile, had already called for a second ambulance as soon as we walked out and saw an entitled mother that luckily arrived fast as lightning. They ended up having to take old sick lady in she left four to five minutes later than if they weren't delayed, but being stable, it seemed less risky to transfer her to their ambulance than to wait out Entitled Mother and use a dirty one. PTO 1 and 2 were still trying to get her to come out. They are not allowed to touch people, but looked about ready to drag her out by the ears. If they waited that long to even get her outside, she's fine. PTO 2 says, ma'am, that is not your call. You're blocking the EMTs from performing their jobs. They could at least hand out masks to people who don't have any. Waiting around for them to finish talking and leave puts us at risk too. What? Someone didn't take her meds today? Her arguments only become more and more childish. That she had right away, that there was a parking restriction, etc. PTO 1 and PTO 2 finally got the woman to come out of the ambulance right before the police arrived. They arrested Entitled Mother. She went ballistic and started crying and grasping at Kid. The poor kid was bawling his eyes out, scared and confused. Nice neighbor ended up calling Kid's dad, who came to collect him within minutes. The dad barely said a word.
but the kid was crying. He didn't want to visit mom anymore if she kept doing mean things. And dad looked ready to pop her head off her shoulders, but kept his cool. I really felt for the poor boy. The case is clear with not only tons of witnesses, but also recorded on the ambulance's camera, the PTO's body cameras, and the bus's dash camera. That's all, folks. Let me know what you think of this entitled mother. I agree with OP. What do you think of this entitled mother? Yikes, is all I can say. Entitled mother is angry I got my order first because I ordered online. Take sit out on the server who I shower in cash. I ordered some pasta and mozzarella steaks from a local pizza joint for lunch today. I used their Google checkout to order and pay and put my info into the pickup notes. My phone rings, my food is done, so I scoot a mile down the road to the pizza place to pick it up. I pull up behind a minivan and call the number. Get put on hold while she talks to the entitled mother in front of me. I can hear the whole conversation because she is using her car speakers turned up to max and she's screaming into the steering wheel. I'm here to pick up an order. Pizza girl says, what was the name on it? Helen. Hmm, I'm not seeing an order for Helen. Did you place it online or call in? I didn't place it yet. Sorry about that. I misunderstood you. What can I get you? This is why you work at a pizza dive, hun. Rattles off a long butt list of stuff, including three pizzas. No problem, we'll get that ready for you. It'll be about 30 minutes. You can't go any faster, my kids are hungry. This is the lunch rush. I'll put a flyer in your bag. It has the store number and next time you can call ahead so we have it ready for you. Ugh. Hangs up. Pizza girl immediately picks up my line. I give her my name and she brings out my bag. It's a small paper bag and obviously doesn't contain three large pizza boxes. As soon as she steps out the door, Entitled Mother starts screaming at her. Is that my food? Why are you giving her my food? This is her order. She called ahead. I was here first and I already told you my kids are freaking hungry. She ordered ahead. Your order is being prepared. Please be patient. Ugh, you suck. Starts yelling at her kids to shut the freak up. At this point, I'm ready to give this girl a freaking medal because I was barely hanging on to my temper. Instead, I thanked her profusely for my food, told her she was doing an amazing job, and tipped her 20 bucks on an $8 order. Not sure how it went down with Entitled Mother after that, but I hope wherever you are, you're having a better day now, pizza girl. Aggressive. Testy. Impatient. Not a great mother. But with that being said, that's all the stories we have for today. So what I want to know is which of these stories is your personal favorite and why? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you all so much for watching the Storytime channel today. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. Thank you all again for watching and listening to the Storytime channel.